everyone. Um, it's such a pleasure to be here today with um, you today. And I'm really thankful for the opportunity to share, um, you know, my talk about, you know, how to operationalize um, ethics in AI and in data and AI. So ensuring responsible AI in practice to deliver successful product and service in the time of uncertainty. Um, everyone's talking about these days about AI and, um, you know, especially ethics in AI is very important. The reason being, Computers understanding the world in two ways. One stream of the way is um, perception, and the other one is cognition. As you can see, that perception, you can see that you know with um, vision and speech, and in cognition, the languages and knowledge. And because even com computer trying to behave more like humans, but there's always this component of ethics and responsibility because computer is not, um, can't think, you know, on behalf of a human being. So what, how to build anything ethically? So you can think about the AI and you can think about the governance and coordination and data collection and software designing and also physical computing devices and compensation method and distribution and use. So what, what do you mean by um, responsible AI? So to, to, um, to think about how to operationalize um, ethics in um, AI and data, you have to think about the responsible AI. You can't separate, you know, two of them. So when you think about responsible AI, organizations are facing more difficult challenges when it comes to ethically informed data collection and sharing. And there's growing demand for incorporating the ethical considerations into um, data and AI and machine learning. So outside of mere legal compliance, there's little guidance on how to incorporate this in ethical, um, you know, in a corporate environment. To fill this gap, we need to explore the development of effective and well-functioning data and AI in AI ethics senior you know, committees and organizations face a difficult challenges when it comes to ethically informed data collection and sharing and privacy and governance. It's all inseparable. On the, on the one hand, there is increased sensitivity to ethical issues and desire for responsible um, stewardship, especially in data, in people's information, both internal and external to organizations. And on the other hand, outside of this, the risk management management component of compliance. And there's very little guidance for organizations about what being ethically responsible and let alone how to incorporate ethical consideration into product and service design, particularly at scale. Even among organizations that have adopted institutional value statements for data and AI ethics platforms, there has been limited success translating them to organizational practice decision making and products. This situation is problematic for stakeholders from within and outside the organizations. For example, individuals, um, privacy, data control, security, and fairness are at stake. For organizations, there are new risks concerning data misuse and insecurities with a potential for loss of trust from users and consumers. So what steps will your organization take in 2019? This is a survey taken quite a while ago, but still this applies to, to this date. To de develop and deploy AI systems that are trustworthy, mm -hmm. fair, and responsible. Um, you can see that in a big percentage, about more than 85% uh, boost AI security with validation and monitoring and verification. And the, the next one comes in, create transparent, explainable, probable AI models. And the, it's followed by create ethical, legal, understandable AI systems. And the third one from the bottom is improve governance with AI operating models, processes. And the next one is test for bias in data, models, human use of algorithms. And the last one was um, we currently have no plans to address these AI issues. So AI continued to improve organizations face two key challenges. The first one is they need to develop a clear understanding of the limitations of the tools they are using. And second one is 
they need to learn how to match models and techniques to their specific problems and challenges. The good news is that product and consulting companies are beginning to provide assistance in these areas. So when you talk about ethical AI and how to deploy it, you cannot um, you cannot not talk about the governance and regulations. So what organizations are doing today? Our conversation with data scientists and machine learning professionals anecdotally, and uh, they are proposing about the fairness, transparency, having the first principles they've aimed to address. And also they are concerned about regulatory changes required in the GDPR. However, have we elevated the priority of privacy and governance and transparency principles? You can see that governance and regulation, that data privacy, security, bias and fairness, explainability, and also interpretability. It is important to note that the practice of responsible AI encompasses more than just privacy and security. Those aspects are important, of course, and are perhaps covered more in mainstream media. But responsible AI also includes concerns and around the safety and reliability, fairness, and transparency and accountability. Given the breadth and depth of domain knowledge requires to address those disparate areas, it is clear that pursuit of responsible AI is a team sport. So why do you need ethics committees? It provides a roadmap and identifies key decisions to organizations. And also it helps to establish the level of ethical governance in critical to helping um, executive to mitigate the risk. So organizing ethics committee, organizations face difficult challenges when it comes to ethically informed data collection and sharing. There is growing demand for incorporating ethical considerations into products and services involved to um, provide consumers and customers. And that's based on AI and machine learning. Outside of mere legal compliance, there's very little guidance on how to incorporate these problems. So we need ethics committee to bring the all multidisciplinary peoples and stakeholders together. A committee-based model has been used effectively in several contexts such as protecting human rights and subjects and supplying guidance in healthcare contexts and providing oversight for embryonic STEM um, experimentation and research. It has also several features that makes it well suited for building organizations, data and ethical um, capacity. How can we get started? Ethics committees can take a wide variety of forms and roles. Crucial to beginning, the building process is putting together the right team of people. That's why um, in the last slide, we talked about it's a team sport. Engaging with organizational stakeholders to bring, to begin to think through the key questions about the function, the values, principles, and location and composition. Excuse me, I'm sorry, and process. Once the basic outlines of the committee are established and the initial committee is formed, quite a lot of operational details will be developed in the <coughs> excuse me in the context of the committee's work. Excuse me, I'm very sorry about this. There is no existing that data and AI ethics committee template, and the field of data and AI ethics is still maturing. So to find the best practice, um, it's better to be very um, diligent and vigilant about what's happening in this, in this space and try to follow the best practice and creating meaningful and effective ethics committee oversight models that only offers benefits and protection to the organization. It is critical to the broader data and AI ethics development process. Excuse me. Deploying AI ethically and responsibly will involve a cross-functional team collaboration, the new tools and processes, and involves key stakeholders. So when you look at the responsible AI, you have to think about fairness, transparency, inclusiveness, accountability, 
safety and reliability, and also security and privacy. So when you look at fairness and inclusive, you can think about the people, the professions who are working as data scientists and machine learning engineers, users and domain experts. How about transparency and accountability? So that falls into legal and compliance experts, UX designers and social scientists. Then how about um, privacy and security, safety and reliability? That really falls into security experts, DevOps, MLOps, and testing, and QA specialists. And you can see that this will provide the strong and solid foundation so that you can follow ethics by design principle. Excuse me. So add diverse roles to your data science team is mandatory. People from these kind of backgrounds will better understand the users and ethical considerations to provide the insights generated. Anthropologists and sociologists can spot stereotypes in, the, um, in this environment and also scientists who create them and can correct the data from underlying bias. Behavioral psychologists also provide great insights that can bridge the gap between users and technology and ensure fairness in the model outcomes. And the next the point I'd like to discuss is hold the data science team accountable. Data science teams must be held accountable for outcomes and must ensure that the business problem they're solving is achieved at not at the expense of ethical code. In order to ensure responsible AI use, you must elevate the moral fiber of your data science team. This needs active um, in a control of and continuous education. Additionally, you also must plan for senior roles such as chief ethics officer or an ethics committee that will become the moral watchdog of your product. The last component is explainability and interpretability. Fair learn, pair, and other tools. There are so many um, best practices offered by Microsoft and Google and um, Salesforce and IBM, etc. Excuse me. Explainable AI is an emerging field in ML that aims to address how black box decisions of AI systems are made. This area inspects and tries to understand the steps and models involved in making decisions. Explainable AI, so-called XAI, is thus expected to most of the owners, operators, and users to answer some hot questions like, why did the AI system make a specific prediction? Or decision? Why didn't the AI system do something else? When did the AI system succeed and when did it fail? When do AI systems give enough confidence in the decision that you can trust it? And how can the AI system correct errors that arise? So when you bring the ethics committees, you can really consider all different you know, the areas to bring the best practice from the ethics committee. A committee-based model has been used effectively in several contexts, such as protecting human and research subjects in healthcare contexts and providing oversight. It has several features that make a building organizational AI and data and AI ethics capacity. You can see that top left top, top left corner, um, top left, um, you know, top left um, side bring together. So people are the most important resources people with a range of expertise needs to effectively analyze, assess, and respond to complex problems and develop. Bottom left, standards, cases, pre precedents, and resources to be used in this making process. On right hand top, be responsible to rapid advance in technological capabilities and to novel applications. And the last part, but not least, constitute a governor's body that can learn, adapt, and be a repository for institutional knowledge. Then how does that contribute to ethical decision making? Why we need to consider ethical decision making when you kick off ethical AI initiatives? As you can see that, like normal project management, you can consider like there are three touch points. 
the first one is intake and you can it can provide a checklist to consider ethics by design so you can tick it off and go check have we considered all the intake of data for example is um, responsible and non-biased data and you can decide it go or no go depending on the outcome and move to the next stage second stage is project execution again it should be coupled with a checklist so when you're executing the um, particular ml models or ai models then you have to consider have we considered all this ethical algorithm non-biased algorithm checkpoint and make sure that all different multidisciplinary perspectives are considered and then you can decide to go or no go and last stage is implement and evaluate excuse me again this should be accompanied by the checklist so when you are implementing and evaluating the model outcome then you have to consider the algorithm is explainable and is it transparent and then how can we measure the matrices that can decide whether it's ethical and responsible and non-biased so you can see that this is all cyclical and iterative approaches so if this is um, cyclical, which means you can go iterated um, approaches so that it's not just a one, two, three and finished everything. You can go back and forth and you can check until everything is delivered um, in responsible and ethical manner. Why ethics in data and AI is so important? You can see that ethics in data, AI is everywhere. It's We are surrounded by ethical, um, AI um, embedded product and services. You go to Amazon and even automated decision making in a legal situation. And healthcare, there's an AI embedded uh, screening and testing is embedded in the healthcare process. And everywhere you interact with the digital devices, you are using AI embedded product services. And that's why ethics in data and AI is so important. And when you think about the motivation, model understanding is absolutely critical in several domains, particularly those involving high stakes decisions. When you look at the healthcare, and when you look at legal decision making, and when you're looking at the loan approval in credit, um, AI embedded algorithm to decide who gets the loan application, who gets rejected, and in legal terms, who, who will be sent to the jail and who will not sent to the jail. And in medical um, use cases, the healthcare systems, how, whether the, the, the data used to create particular algorithm is, is it gender biased? Have we considered the ratio of male um, research database versus female? Because if it's not um, equally distributed, it might cause unexpected um, consequences. And same goes to the legal outcome, the decision process. Have we considered all diverse and um, inclusive ethical database or is data skewed? So, so that as a result, the algorithm being created on the base of data is not, it's biased. That kind of um, consideration should be must because we don't want to um, create unexpected consequences because the AI algorithm creates outcome and it can be amplified and it can create really um, unexpected, amplified it, um, exp exponentially um, amplified outcome and that's, you can't turn it back. So when you talk about the ethics in data and AI, why model understanding is so important? It's because when you consider the input and the predictive model and model understanding, the prediction can come, is it really cyber and huskies? And this mo model is relying on these different features and this prediction can be um, the fixed by putting into um, proper um, procedure. And also why model is, um, you know, should be, um, you know, under consideration. So model understanding is why important? Defendant details, the file comes in and you create predictive model and then prediction it can be risky or to release depending on the race and crimes gender different attributes 
used and the algorithm gives out the attribute importance. So the prediction is biased depending on the race and gender are being used to make the prediction then that's not the correct way to use it. So again, so why model understanding is very important? The example was from the loan application details. You can see that the file comes in and predictive model and the prediction is a denied loan. Again, the model understanding is increased salary by 50k plus pay credit card bills on time for next three months to get a loan. So you can see that some means for recourse and you know you can go and work on the promotion and pay the bills on time. So you can all see all this situation how this can be really biased depending on the subset of the data and patient data for this user case is the females and also male and different ages and different symptoms and predictive models being created and model understanding there are some rules to follow if gender female and then greater than 206 and you can see that gender male and then true and cough then sick you can see that all the predictions healthy sick healthy sick so again this model is using um irrelevant features to predict on the female subpopulation then trust um how can you trust the predictions for this group again for these reasons, it's very important. All different features and all different attributes should be considered very thoroughly to make fair ju um, judgment. This case is patient data again and the model, and then you can really authority can really run through what's the outcome again. So this can be again approved and not approved depending on the algorithm. So actual motivation for why model understanding is so important you can see that for utility debugging bias detection recourse if and when to trust model predictions and that models to assess us suitability for deployment and for stakeholders and users loan applications loan applicants and decision makers doctors and judges and regulatory agencies, FDA, European commissions, and researchers and engineers. So you can see that to achieve the model understanding, you need to build inherently interpretable predictive models. This case, as you can see, the classification tree it is very easy to understand because at a glance, you can see that if and then rules applies, and it's easier to interpret. So it's user friendly for stakeholders. And again, another case is black box. Explain pre-built models in a post-hoc manner. As you can see that the black box model and explainer. And using that, then you can understand. And if then the rules and predict, and you can see that, you know, you can really explain to the stakeholders how all this, um, the explainer works in this black box model. So you can see that overview of explanation methodology you can consider local explanation versus global explanation for the local explanations you can see explain individual predictions help unearth the biases in the local neighborhood of a given instance help very if individual predictions are being made for the right reasons versus global explanation so explain the complete behavior of the, um, the world and sheds light on big picture biases affecting larger subgroups. And also help that if the model at a high level is suitable for deployment. How about LIME? Local interpretable model agnostic explanations. So you can see that LIME approach followed by sample points around the X1, as you can see from the right hand on the, on the diagram, use model to predict labels for each sample, then weigh samples according to distance to XI, and then learn simple linear model on weighted samples. Use a simple linear model to explain. Another popular method when outputs feature importance is sharply value. And another way of um, you know, using counterfactual explanations so what features need to be changed and by how much to actually see a model prediction. So as you can see that um, the, all these um, 
in a crested ocelot and red-faced ocelot. You can see that by using the counterfactual explanation, you can actually um, help to explain how the model works. So how does counterfactual explanation work? You can see that predictive model fx and the counterfactual generation algorithm helps um, to recourse the outcome. And that brings back loan applications, whether you deny the loan or not. So recourse increase your salary by 50K and pay your credit card bills on time for next three months. So you can see the global explanation from local feature importances. So you can see that Lime explained a single prediction, local behavior for single instance, and can't examine all explanations, then instead pick K explanation to show to the user. Representative should summarize the model's global behavior. Diverse should not be redundant in their descriptions. And, and SP and Lime uses submodular optimizations and greedily picks K explanations. So the road ahead. Explainability as a technology is fragile. Research is in progress. And improving the reliability of explanations and developing evaluation frameworks for explanations. And also focusing on the scalability of explanation methods. Still, we have a fair bit of work to do, but the positive thing is there are so many voices surfacing and acknowledging the importance of ex explainability and how it is mandatory. So a lot of different bodies coming together to working to establish accountability, responsibility, and transparency. AI ethics by design can ensure maximizing the value created by AI. So when you talk about ethics of AI, you can really consider four main pillars, fairness, reliability and safety, privacy and security, inclusiveness, and is underpinned by transparency and accountability. And three core principles can help leaders think through AI's ethical implications. The first one is impact. The, mor the moral quality of a technology depends on its consequences. Risks and benefits must be weighed. And it is an art in a way because data scientists should con con continuously um, really consider and balancing the benefits being created versus the risks you are giving out. Because it is so important to really bring out known maleficence, avoid harm, beneficence, advance the flourishing of people and societies. And the next important aspect is justice. People should be treated fairly. That, that is mandatory. Technology is not for technology. It's for human being. Procedural fairness promote fair treatment and distribu distribu distributive fairness promote equitable outcomes and autonomous. People should make should be able to make their um, overall outcomes under their choices and free of manipulative forces. Comprehension, explain how to use and when to trust AI. Control, allow people to modify or override AI when appropriate. As you can see that, we cannot afford to look at you know, AI and the society in the future with uncritical eyes, according to the future computed. So as you can see that AI provides amazing uncharted opportunity to the community and citizens, but it comes with responsible and ethical and transparent and diverse and inclusive AI. So people are talking about when medical professionals, doctors, especially they enter professional their career, they do Hippocrates oath, do not harm. Who do we see a Hippocratic oath for coders and data professionals and data scientists, engineers, like we see for doctors? We've discussed all different components and aspects about how to operationalize ethics in data and AI but still we are scratching the surface of the tip of the iceberg. There should be more conversations should happening through this kind of amazing event 
all forums and there should be people who should really bring the voices together and truly collaboratively bring all different multidisciplinary aspects and perspectives together. And that's why it is a team sport to bring the best outcome and best application with AI to really serve and help people and community. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed my talk.